Shalom. All praises go to the Most High, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shah, Basham, and Wakwa. That's double on us under the elder apostles, a great millstone. For the teachings of the scriptures, among other things, Shalom to the sincere Akim across the world. Now, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 23, titled Balaam's Parables. Verse 1 And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram, which is an ox, which is a cow. Here. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure, the Lord will come to meet me, which would be then the angel that would speak through the Lord. Uh, sorry, the Lord would speak then through the angel. And whatsoever he showed me, I will tell thee. And he went to a high place. And the angel would enter heavenly father, through the angel, met. See? Again, it says here, all caps, Yahweh, And here it says, Allahayim, which is the angel. But sometimes when you read it, it does say this, but it represents the Heavenly Father. So yeah, I hope I explained that in the video before this. Which is number chapter, Numbers chapter 22. Going on. Now it says, And the power met Balaam. And he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars. And I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram, which is an ox. And the Heavenly Father put a word in Balaam's mouth, through the angel of course, and then the angel told Balaam. So yeah, uh, I think I have explained that enough. Probably, won't, probably don't want to hear it no more. <laughs> Going on. And said, Return unto Balak, and thus shalt thou speak. And, return, and he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt, uh, his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, had brought me from Aram, from Mesopotamia, by the way. So Balak was from Mesopotamia, uh, Aram to be specific out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse ye Jacob, and come, defy Israel, which is, the, which is another name for Jacob, the nation. It's the same thing. How shall I curse whom the Heavenly Father had not cursed? <laughs> or how shall I defy whom the Heavenly Father had not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. So from the, basically from the mountains, he can see Jacob. And it, also their future. He's going to explain it later. He can see their future. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. This is the truth. We are not reckoned among the nations because the Heavenly Father said, let me see, um, here, for example, Amos 3 and 2, 1. Hear the word, hear this word that the, that the Heavenly Father, that, that Yahweh had spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only, you only have I known of all the families on the earth of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you, for all your iniquities. That's one. And the other is. Hmm, here. The other is here. Which is. Second Esther step chapter 6. Verse 54. And after these Adam also. Whom thou made us lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all. That's true. We come, everybody comes from Adam through Noah. 
And then Noah's three sons are the only ones, only eight people that live um, uh, um, after the flood. Right. So only eight people lived after the flood. Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. Which is three fears says ah yeah right that's eight people <laughs> so we all come from Adam Noah and Shem Japhet had Shem Ham and Japhet right uh, of him come we all and and the people also whom thou has chosen so among all the people that come from Adam which is all people he has a specific chosen line that he chose which he gathers unto him that are not reckoned among the other nations when he counts them he counts the nation of Israel separately as you can see here in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 wait right Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power Yahweh thy power had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth that doesn't sound like equality to me when i read it it says above all people that are upon the face of the earth you only have i known of all the families upon the face of the earth the lord did not set his love upon you nor chose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people right because there was only 36 of us in the beginning coming out of uh, coming going toward uh, Egypt or was it 37 Genesis 46 and 26 and all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt which came out of his loins right out of his you know you know his genital region his seed, sperm, which is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, besides Jacob's son's wives, all the souls that were three score and six, which is one score is uh, 20, and then uh, three times 20 is 60, and that's 66. And then in, in, um, in, uh, <laughs> in Egypt, you already had Joseph and his sons right and you can read that in the book of exodus chapter one which is here so it says here exodus chapter one verse five and all the souls that came out of the loins of jacob were 70 souls for joseph was all was in egypt already see <clears throat> right so it was 66 that went to there and then, I guess you had four that was in, no, jo Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Ephraim. Mm, somewhere some, somebody else was counted along, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of lost which one it is. Let me see, let me see, maybe it says here. And the sons of Joseph, which were, in, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three score and ten. Right, those so sixty and ten, which is uh, seventy. Yeah, right. Which which I just read in Exodus chapter one, and this is uh, Genesis chapter forty six. Right. So yeah, right. Okay. Right. So we are the few. We were the fewest, and also here in the book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. Verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that Yahweh thy power will set, will set thee on high, where? Above all nations on the earth. That does not sound like equality to me. I might be not so smart, but hey. You also have that in the book of Revelation chapter 2. And also you have it here in the book of First Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. 
that Moses commanded us. That's the I. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we would be the the we would not be the head because it says here. Mm, wait, where is it? If we listen to the Lord, then we would be the head. Where is it? Oh yeah, here, 13. And the Lord will make thee the head and not the tail. But then we turn around and then we turn into the head the tail. <laughs> um, for verse 44, which is the curses from 15 on down until 68 are the curses mentioned. That would happen to the Israelites if they did not listen to the Lord. He shall lend to thee and thou shall not lend to him. And that's a fact until this day. These, pe these people that call themselves Israelis they don't lend they don't borrow from no one they lend you and then they lend you it in with usury which is interest so if you borrow a hundred dollars you need to pay back 120 which makes no fucking sense whatsoever but the point is that because the point is why did why do i come to you in the first place i come to you because i have no money so why are you going to charge me extra money for giving you back it don't make no damn sense but anyway this is what they do so that's what they do yeah he shall be the head and thou shall be the tail so if we don't listen we're gonna be the tail upon the planet earth and they're gonna be the head in this case is the Edomite nation the so-called Caucasians but if we would listen to the Lord then we would be the one borrowing him and then we would put usury upon him because that is according to the law because the reason I said that he's doing it unfair is because it, the, the, the scripture says It says here, the book of, wait a minute, yeah, here, for example, Deuteronomy 23 and 19, thou shalt not lend upon usury, now, what is usury? Interest, here, usury, the action or practice of lending money at an unreasonable high rates of interest, uh oh, at unreasonably high rates of interest, and that's what they're doing upon that brother usury of money usury of victuals which is food usury of anything that is lent upon usury unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury of another race not again not against an Israelite an Israelite but the, and the reason I said that these Caucasian these Edomites these Caucasian people are doing are doing evil is because they're doing it to their own people also so they that greedy so that's why I said they're wrong uh, right, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that Yahweh thy power may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to do in the land where thou goest to possess it. <clears throat> so, you're not supposed to actually uh, put interest upon anything in existence towards your own people, but the Caucasian race is doing that. Meanwhile, they claim, they swear. presidents so they swear in on the Bible they swear in on uh, in the in their court system so they 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 use this Bible <laughs> they swear falsely upon the Bible and by the way you're not you're not <clears throat> you're not even allowed to, pr to uh, swear upon the Bible you know Matthew 5 James 5 all mention that Matthew 5 and 34 on down and James 5 and 12 you're not allowed to swear on anything nor take a vow on anything and one more let me see mm, let your yay be yay and everything but anyway going on right so you're not allowed to swear so yeah right so the heavenly father going on second Esther chapter 6 verse 55 all this have I spoken before thee O Lord because thou madest the world for our sakes so what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to serve the nation of Israel. And if you think that's far-fetched, like, I don't want to serve no nigger, you're already serving these Edomites. Why? You go to work for them. They tax you. They uh, make you go to their schools. They make you work for them. You want housing? You need to go to them. You want land? You need to go to them. And then, after you bought the land and the house, you paid off everything, 
then they tax you. They keep on taxing you. The, the, the house is never yours. And if some sort of trouble comes to pass in the future, they can take your house. Even if you pay off your car. Why don't you pay off your car and not pay car insurance or, or the, the, the road taxes? See what happens to your car. They will take your car. Even though you paid, hmm, it, let's, let's say you buy a car for 40,000 euros. Just normal people, okay? Well, no, actually, that's not, middle class actually would do that. But, but you paid it off. The point is you paid it off. It's 100% brand new. Nobody ever drove it, okay? Only except to the car place, okay? Anyway, or maybe sometimes they don't because they just put it in a ship and then they bring it and then they, you know, they drop it off and stuff like that. But anyway, right, so nobody ever driven it um, and then you buy it and then it's yours. But then if you don't pay road taxes, guess what? They are able to take your car from you. They could take your house from you. They could take anything from you. So nothing is actually 100% yours. So you're already living this life right now serving the nation of Edom you already are right so you but it's going to transfer onto us here the book of Sirach the book of uh, the Apocrypha the book of Sirach Ecclesiasticus 10 and 8 because of unrighteous dealings injuries and riches got by deceit which is what the Caucasian people have done rape rob murder steal from here steal from there make their own countries richer and richer and richer while making the rest of the world poorer and poorer and poorer because of unrighteous dealings injuries they deal unrighteously with you injuries rape rob murder and riches got by deceit stealing murdering for that the land for example for the oil for the gold silver diamonds everything and anything mineral resources anything the kingdom is translated from one people to another and that lord is going to do that all your sins are reaching unto heaven the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom and that sinful kingdom nowadays it's, it's the kingdom of Esau the so-called Caucasian people which rule the world right now there's they rule the world and if you think that's the, not the truth like the Chinese will shut up because the Caucasian people have made millions of people go bankrupt by shutting down the world for like two years all the stores was a force to shut down and if you don't shut down, they'll fine you. So they're the rulers of this earth. Going on. As for the other people, which I was talk just talking about. As for the other people, which also come of Adam. Thou, thou, the Heavenly Father himself. So Ezra is just talking now uh, to the Heavenly Father through the angel. Right? Thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto t spittle. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So what did the Lord do? The Lord does this. The Lord sees them as this little drop over here. This little drop. This little, 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 little tiny old drop over here. Right? That falls from a vessel. Right. Just like this little drop over here. For example here it falls from a vessel right if you had a full bucket of water and a little drop falls out of that drop this little drop over here like doink, that little one would you care would you actually really care is that gonna uh, quench your thirst it, it really you you think <laughs> that's how the nations of the world are seen in the eyes of the Lord he himself said that it wasn't Ezra that said that. I didn't say it. Uh, I, I, he said that. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them, right, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. That's how much he cares about the abundance of them. They have billions of people. They're just a drop to the Heavenly Father. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing by you, O Lord, yourself, have begun to be rule, oh sorry, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. And that is the truth. This does not happen to the Israeli people. This happens to the slave descendants, the Native Americans, and uh, the West Coast people of Africa. 
they're being ruled over by their enemies, which are the Hamites in that country. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, in the book of Exodus chapter 4, they, uh, thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands because of our sins. The book of Baruch chapter 4 will, will, will show you that. Because we sinned against the Lord and then we were given into their hand for our own wickedness. But that does not mean that they were, were allowed to do the things that they did. <laughs> you got to hold that into account. Come on, man. Verse 59. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So he's asking the Lord, how long shall we not have anything on the planet Earth? Well, we are in the final stages of their queendom. It's about to be over with them, man. <laughs> it's about to be. That's why they're trying to make America great again, because it's fallen. All over the places, the Europe, you had the, the Caucasian places, Europe, Australia, South Africa, they're, they're, they're losing. They're losing their grip, their iron fist grip upon the planet Earth. Down there in South Africa, they're being slaughtered, killed. If they just talk some shit in the wrong name, but they're dead. Okay, that's what's happening right now. Their females are being ravaged, torn apart. Some of them killed, some of them kept alive to go on TikTok and tell their story. <laughs> now you know how it feels to be a so-called black female. Fucked up. Nobody can help you. You're being tossed around from, from, from guys to guys. And, and your men can't help you. <laughs> now you know what it's like to be a nigga. What up, nigga? Going on. Right, so, uh, right, where was I? Hmm. Right, which now I am back at um, Numbers chapter 23, verse 9. From the top of the rocks I see him. And from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. The Israelites shall not be counted among the nations as if we are one with the whole world. Because the Lord doesn't want that. As he did it here in the book of, let me see. The Lord separated the nations. Deuteronomy chapter 22 Verse 8, when the Most High divided the name, divided, what does divided mean? Divided, definition. Split into parts, separated. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, everybody is supposed to have what they have, but the so-called Caucasian people takes from everybody. That's why the rest of the world is poor and he's rich. When he separated the sons of Adam, so we were separated. That's why we're not supposed to be together, all of us. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So, everybody got their portion, but the Heavenly Father took care of Israel so that they got the greatest portion. And everybody hates us for that. That's why all nations in existence, they hate a nick. That's the, that's the, that's the biggest fucking hatred that they have like a nick they, they hate that shit man <laughs> they hate that shit. <laughs> and the, uh, okay the lord will, will do it also when the lord will come back he will separate us once more so this kumbaya all jesus loves everybody put everybody together in all harmony that's bullshit it says here matthew chapter 25 verse 31 when the Son of Man, the Lord Himself, Yahweh Shai, shall come in His glory when He comes back, and all the angels with Him, or all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So this shows you that we're not going to be together, holding hands, black and white, and Holding hands together. No, 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 no. The Lord is not going to do that. We're not going to be in harmony. Because when you have the UN seat, for example. Do 
Do you see any niggas? No, you don't. Why? Because they're all in together against us. You don't see me. You don't see my type. You don't see my people here. What the fuck? They don't. You see Africans. That's not me. Do you see these people also amongst the Africans? Bushmen. Do you see these Bushmen people? Do you see them in the parliament? No. Because they're not fucking included. They're not included. You don't see them. You don't see the... Uh, Oh, you smell that? What to see? Wait, you don't see them. Wait, wait, wait. That's a cow. What to see people? Yeah, you don't see them. You see a, a particular tribe of the Africans, the Hamites. These are Hamites, man. Those are not my people. You know, our people are scattered. Yes, but uh, believe me, they will never put what they call a nigga in the midst of them as a ruler. Get the fuck out of here! Look, look at these. These so-called dark-skinned people, they're they're a bunch of white, uh, they're a bunch of dark uh, white people. Dark-skinned, well, they can they can't dance. Fuck them. The West African people are our people, you know. But amongst them are Hamites, just like how you have in the midst of our people, you have a bunch of tear babies, which their forefather is a Caucasian male. <laughs> That's not my people. You come from the sperm from a Caucasian male, which is an Edomite male, in the womb in the womb of a so-called black female. You're not my people. Get the fuck out of here. Now, if one of my people make children with your females, the Caucasian daughters, then that child is my people, right? That's how it works. The Heavenly Father is not the author of Confucian. It's very simple. You are what your father is, right? By the way, these, these people, these, in, these, uh, these Elam, these Elam, which are the Persians, uh, they, they're, they're represented. Uh, my people are not there. Sudanese, right? Look, look at this guy. Anyway, so we're not counted among them. Neither shall we in the future. First twenty is first thirty-three. Uh, Matthew twenty-five and thirty-three, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, which are the Israelites, but the goats on the left, which are the heathen nations and the wicked of our people. They're gonna die too. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, which the ones on his right are the sheep. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from when? From the foundation of the world. Since the world, before the world was created, the Israelites were already predestined, preordained, chosen, if you elected, if you will, to be saved. As it says here, Ephesians 1 and 4, according as he, the Heavenly Father, had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So before the world was created, he already laid out the plan. Hmm. These are the ones that I will make go through slavery, and this is the one that I will make do it. And these are the ones that are going to benefit off of slavery, making money, making merchandise, uh, getting richer and fatter upon the planet Earth. Hmm. And then him, Jacob, in the end, I will save. And after laughter at all the people, first they're going to laugh, and then they're going to cry. <laughs> they're going to cry because they're going to beg. Oh, shit, I wish I was a slave to send it myself. Oh, my God. I would just lose everything, my whole soul I would sell just to be with them. Balaam is going to say the same thing here in the book of Numbers around here somewhere. He's going to wish that he was an Israelite also. <laughs> be he he already seen the future so all these nations they're gonna cry too before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love before Yahweh Shine in the name of our father Yahweh right okay so going on now it says here mm, numbers chapter 23 verse 10 who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel. Here it's a, here it is. Let me, who's me, Balaam, he's talking because he took up his parable and then he started to talk. So he said, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Which is, you can't. Let me give you an example. Genesis 13 and 16. 
and I will make thy seed that the, as the dust of the earth, so that a man, uh, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you cannot number the dust of the earth. <laughs> That's why it's called thou sand thousand why because you can't even count you, you can't even count the particles that are in here you can't oh you can try you can try you can try if you want to you can try you're gonna have you're gonna have a very busy day <laughs> and if you make one mistake <laughs> you start over again <laughs> but now you got to find the ones that you put aside <laughs> This is it is able to be counted, but what about this? Huh? What about this? That's nothing. That that is not in his hand. <laughs> can you count this? A loose loose apart from his hand? Can you, can you? I can't. And I'm not even gonna try. That's that's just, you wasting your time, man. You wasting your time. You're not gonna be able to do that. You can try if you want to, by the way. But anyway then shall thy seed also be numbered so if you can count the dust of, and that was just sand that was not even the rest of the earth particles um, that's not even the rest how about this <laughs> come on man really you really think you're, you're going to be able to count this cool let's go on but the lord did say Because of the curses, the Lord said this, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 62. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude. Can you count the stars? No, you can't. But the Heavenly Father diminished our numbers because we sinned against them. So he killed a lot of us, man. <laughs> Millions. But he, let's just say he allowed us to die. But it was him. The Lord kill it and the Lord make it alive. So, But then he, the nations that murdered us, they're going to pay for that. Don't forget that part. Because that, why, why did he kill us? Why did he make us few in number? As we were, the, as the stars of the heavens, as we were, as the sand of the world, the seas and stuff like that. Because thou wouldest not obey the voice of Yahweh thy power. That's why he, he allowed us to die like beasts. Because <laughs> we lived like beasts. Lawless. Right, going on. Genesis 22 and 17. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. We don't do that right now. Our enemies possess our gates. But once that time comes, we will possess theirs. Why? They have shown themselves to be enemies. They hate you. Why don't you date their daughter? See what go. See what's, what's really going down. They love their daughter to death until their daughter bring a nigga ass nigga home. That's about the time they want to kill her. Uh, the Arabs do that. Uh, they call it um, <laughs> not revenge porn. <laughs> they call it honor killing. You date a nigga, you die. Basically, Turkish had that too. The Turk, the Turks had that too because they're Islam too. By the way, uh, you don't bring no nigga home, boy. That's a, that's a big no-no for them, right? Even if you turn to Muslim, then they, it's a little bit linear then, but they still hate you. I have seen this. I live amongst these fucking people. What are you talking about, man? Just because you turn into a Muslim doesn't mean that they don't want to kill her because of you. Or kill you. Going on. Psalms 116 and 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Oh, sorry. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints now you might think this is cruel but there's a beautiful explanation for that wisdom of solomon chapter 3 verse 1 and i'll read until 5 you can read the rest if you have the time but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the lord so your soul is never going to be uh, messed up your body might die but your soul not you're in protection with the lord and there shall no torment touch them in the sight of the unwise they seemed to die that's true and their departure is taken for misery. Like, ha, 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 he suffered, ha, 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 right? Oh, look at these niggers. 
they die broke. <laughs> All the millions that they had, <laughs> they die broke because I robbed them. <laughs> I gave them shady deals <laughs> and made them sign a contract. <laughs> And after their death, all the money went to me <laughs> and my people. Ho, ho, ho. That's the type of shit that they do, right? Now go check history. All the rich of our people. How did they die? Red Fox, Tupac. All these people just die horrible. You know what I'm saying? Until this day, the people of Biggie uh, are fighting for their money. That, that, that is old on her. Copyright, we got the money, the biggie when you die, not the heirs, heirs, here, their, their, their heirs square off against widow of hip hop, um, square off against him, let me see wrong for that, it's they thinks parasite photographers, photographers, let me see, has filed a lawsuit against the wife of the famous hip hop photographer, Chi Mundu, some kind of Asian person or something like that. Chi, oh, I thought it was a girl. Wow, you got a funny name, boy. I thought it was a, some kind of Asian chick, a photographer. Okay, cool. But uh, there's a there's a lot of things going on. I have seen a article. Hmm. Biggie wife uh, suing companies for uh, companies. They were suing the companies. Mm. What are they doing? Oh shit! I ain't got time for that. I ain't got no time for that. But uh, how come BET goes to YouTube? That's, that's crazy. Oh, but it says BET.com. It doesn't say YouTube. That's weird. Anyway, let me see. And Sue Swiss are suing a company that makes snowboards, accusing them of using the late face to... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, there was something wrong about there uh, here. And also, you got this guy, which is also an issue, right? Um, big pun. Suing companies, let me see. Oh, they sell out the lawsuit. Oh, two year legal battle, fat joke. A settlement type of okay, thing. Da, da, da. Okay, Joe had stolen stuff like that. Okay, so that's a battle between them, I think these two. But uh, you have these record companies. Mm. Marvin Gaye, Judy Garland, M Mickey Rooney, Corey Ham, uh, uh, Corey Ham? Uh, no, that's an Edomite. Hey, nigga, the nigga, that's a, uh, no, no. Anyway, you can check the, the, the records for yourself. Our people often die broke, even though they made these people billions of dollars. Millions and billions of dollars and stuff like that. Let me go on. Now, for Wisdom of Solomon 3 and... No, it's three and three. And they're going from us to be utter destruction. That's what they think. But they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. That's what the, the Israelites that are believing in the Heavenly Father when they die, that's what their hope is toward, immortality. Because when the Lord comes, He's going to give us that immortality. Because it, it says it right here. It's in uh, John 6, if I'm correct. Wait, raise last days. I think it's John here. here. John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which had sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again, at the last day so that's when we're gonna get the immortality power when he comes back when he comes back he's gonna make us immortal right first Corinthians chapter 15 speaks about that by the way if you want to read up on it 
Okay, verse 5. The wisdom of Solomon 3 and 5. Here it comes. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Heavenly Father proved them and found them worthy for himself. So, the death of the saints is a precious thing in the Heavenly Father's eyes. Just like how his son died. Uh, which is for this truth. And also, the Israelites that die for this truth is a precious thing in the sight of the Lord. If you are a beast and you live as a beast, guess what? Well, when you die, it's not a precious thing. Right. So, Numbers chapter 23, verse 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? No one. Let me die the death of the righteous. And let my last end be like his. This is what Balaam wanted. He saw that. He was like, whoa. Hey, 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 I want to I I be like him then. You know? I want to die like them then. Go through slavery. All that crazy stuff. I'd rather be a slave now. Cry now and laugh later. Once I get that superpower and I'm able to fly. Do all these type of superpower type things. They love Marvel comics. They love DC comics. Those are our powers. But we're gonna get that. That's why when I'm looking at movies, I'm looking at I'm looking at myself. I don't eat popcorn while eating while watching the movie. <laughs> I watch patiently, like at attentively. Actually, I, I should say. I watch patiently for the power. I, I, I wait patiently for the power, Heavenly Father willing, and I watch attentively when I'm watching a movie. <laughs> I'm paying attention. That's the point. And Balak said unto Balaam, "What hast thou done unto me?" <laughs> He's like, hey, what are you doing to me, man? You can't be, you can't be saying all these good things about these people. <laughs> I took thee to curse mine enemies, and now behold, thou hast blessed them all together. Like, what, what, what are you doing to me, man? This is not what I called you here for. Don't do this to me. <laughs> and he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the heavenly Father Yahweh had put in my mouth, right? Uh, and, Instead of listening to you. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse me them from thence. So he wanted to go to another portion, and then curse him from there, <laughs> so that he can beat that little part then. As if the other ones would come and fight him, uh, with them. <laughs> Sucker. Verse 14. And he brought them into the field of Sophim. Sophim. Wait. Let me see. Yeah. Um, let me see something. Mm. Right, right. To the top of uh, Pishka. And built seven altars. And offered to Bullock and a ram on every altar so he doing it again <laughs> so he blessed them the first time right because it says it right here here bless them the first time sorry um, here. so going on and he said unto Balak stand by thy burnt offering while I meet the Lord Yahweh yonder and he's going to meet the angel, by the way. And the Lord met angel. Oh, sorry. And the Lord met uh, Balaam. And put a word in his mouth. But the angel did it. you know, And said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. <laughs> and when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, what has the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So he's not going to change. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Yes. Because that's the Lord. He's not a man that he should lie. As you can see here. Malachi 3 and 6. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. 
by I am Yahweh. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right? Okay, you might say, like here it says that, it says here that uh, the Heavenly Father is not a man that he should repent. But then you might be like, oh, you know what? I got something for you. Because here it says that he did repent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because they want to, you have these people that want to fight against the Lord. Like, well, the, the Bible contradicts you. In Genesis chapter 6, verse. Here, seven. And Yahweh said, "I will destroy him." He, he told um, Noah, "I will." And, by, and he told he told Noah through the angel, because no man can see the heavenly Father unless he dies. So the heavenly Father sent uh, the angel to come talk to Noah. <laughs> I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So now you might say, wait a minute, but it says that the Lord doesn't repent. But but here it says he repented, right? Well, if you go here to the book of Psalms 106 and 45, and he remembered, the Heavenly Father remembered for them, for the Israelites, his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he remembered for them his covenant and repented. How? How does the Lord repent? according to the multitude of his mercies that is how he repented not repented as i made a mistake he didn't make no mistake man you're the one that makes mistake the man the heavenly father doesn't make no mistakes and you can see it here also which is here in the book of second Exodus chapter 3 verse to show you that he didn't make no mistake and also here in the book of Romans chapter 8. Here. 2nd Esther chapter 3 verse 20. 19. And thy glory, the glory of the Heavenly Father, went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold. How? Why? That thou mayest give the law unto the seed of Jacob. The law is not given unto the whole world. It's given unto the Jacob descendants. The whole world doesn't know the Heavenly Father. Psalms 174 and 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. They is the heathen nations. Praise ye the Lord. The Heavenly Father doesn't deal with them. Um, verse 19, Second Esther uh, 3 and 19, That thou mayest give the law unto the seed of Jacob, and the diligence unto the generation of Israel, not the world. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. Because... If we kept the law, then we would bear the fruits of the blessings of the Heavenly Father. But we have a wicked heart, man. We make mistakes. Some willingly, some against their will. And for those, the Lord comes. The ones that don't really want to sin. Like in the book of uh, first, no, Romans chapter 7. Not First Corinthians 7. Romans 7. You will see that Paul will explain that it is sin that dwelleth in me. And I don't want to do it, but I do it. For those people, the Lord comes. Because the Lord said, if you sin willfully, <laughs> I ain't I ain't playing with you, bro. You finna die for that. Ezekiel 18 speaks about that. And also in the New Testament. But um, I kind of forgot where. Let me see. Sin willfully. Let me see. Um, where is it again? Sin. Here, here, here. Oh, let me see. Where is it again? No, no, no. It's not here. Oh, yeah, it is. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, just like when he told the woman, 32, was it 832? No. Um, 
11. John chapter 8, verse uh, 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Yahusha said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So why did he say that? Because if you read from verse 4 until here, verse 11, you will see, they say unto him, verse 4, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So she was literally having, mm, uh, oh shit, oh my God. And then she turned, you know what I'm saying? She covered the clothes up. And everybody knew, hey, you have a husband at home. You're going to die for this one. <laughs> You're going to die for this one. And then Yahweh Shai asked them, like, an, um, if, if anyone you are, if your conscience is clean, then throw the first stone then. <laughs> Nobody threw the first stone because they knew like they committed adultery too, but they, they didn't get caught. <laughs> so they was like shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I think I hear my mama calling. Let's have a, a, another one. Be, you know, I think I hear my wife calling. Wait, I think I think I think I left something on the stove. I, I gotta go. Right, everybody left because they knew in their in their conscience that hey shit, I shit, you know shit. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just leave. But the point is this, the point is this, go and sin no more, don't do it again. So, Hebrew 10 and 26, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So guess what, you're not going to get covered, man. You're not going to get covered because you know the truth. You know. So why are you going ahead and doing it? Because you're a demon. And the demon deserves death. Luke chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. If you know that the Lord doesn't want that, you commit adultery, go and do, go and sin no more. Don't do it again. And prepare not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You're going to get what you deserve. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. You're going to get your ass whooped, but you're going to get a little bit less because, well, you didn't know. James 3 and 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So the more you know, the more you're going to get your ass whooped. So back to Luke 12 and 48. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whosoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Right, if you're a leader, people are going to ask more of you and expect more of you. You can't do certain things if you are a public figure, <laughs> you know, so yeah. But just because you're not a public figure doesn't mean you can't do much uh, neither. You need to, you know what I'm saying? That's just, just because a lot of people don't see you doing your crimes doesn't mean you can do it. Because if you are in the public eye and you have committed adultery, the cameras are on you, man. <laughs> you know? You sleep with another man's wife. By the way, a man is allowed to have multiple wives, so don't get it twisted what adultery is. <laughs> if, you, if I have 15 wives uh, and I take care of them and stuff like that, don't... You ain't got nothing to say. That's between me and them and the Lord. The Lord allowed me to do that. If I was a millionaire, I would have multiple wives, but I ain't married. I ain't putting no rings on these fingers, on your stupid fingers. You're stupid. That's nowhere in the Bible whatsoever. That's a hedonistic custom, and that don't mean anything. With the Heavenly Father, as soon as you lay with that woman, you pop her cherry, that's your wife. Not no... I've now pronounced you. How do you know why you make it your bride? They done fucked, sucked, do did all filthy things with each other before they get married, and now you're talking about you make kiss the bride. There, that mouth already been on that dick. Who are you talking about? You make kiss the bride, sucker. Why don't you kiss that dick over there, and them other dicks that you was kissing before you got with this sucker, this victim, before you married this victim. You should be dressed in all black when you marry if you're not a virgin. Or dress in all red, meaning the cherry has already been popped to blood. That's what you should be dressing in instead of a white, a clean maiden um, dress, that virgin dress. 
that white represents that blood is about to be spilled on it for the pussy that he's about to pop the cherry right and then the blood will be up on there the token of uh, virginity <laughs> you should wear black so we can't see that you already have been penetrated before blood is already spilled upon somebody else's bed and he left you most of the times <laughs> when dudes fuck y'all they leave and then you go find another sucker to marry <laughs> right funny as hell so don't sin willfully don't sin willfully right going on back over here so um, Second Esther chapter 3 verse 20 and yet took us down not away from them a wicked heart that thy law might bring forth fruit in them for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed he made mistakes and that same mistake is, ge is uh, generated within us and was overcome he lost and so be they sorry and so be all they that are born of him so that's why everybody has a wicked heart but you need to be able to tame that heart and if you can't then you're a beast because if you have no loss you are a beast you're likened unto a beast because you're lawless 22 thus infirmity was made permanent because the wicked heart was in us and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root which is malice we have malice within us man and what is malignity is malice <clears throat> nothing yeah. malignity definition um, persistent intense ill will or desire to harm others <clears throat> great malice that is what a lot of people have within them if somebody wronged you you know you, you want to get them back eh, that's that's tending to harm desire to harm another it, you have you have it in you you have it in you right and a lot of people that uh, jump up and down that they don't hurt others and stuff like that and they they love animals well why don't you kick a dog in the face see what what they want to do all of a sudden that all all that love and care for everybody turns <laughs> they're gonna want to hurt you <laughs> or at least wish death upon you <laughs> or or harm upon you just because you hurt animals you know you have people like that that really are not violent <coughs> sorry they really are not violent toward another person and they really love animals okay why don't you step on a butterfly see what they want to do to you <laughs> i wouldn't step on a butterfly by the way i don't like that shit why would i do that so i'm kind of one of them but i hate people too don't get that twisted <laughs> so yeah i'm not that soft <laughs> right and i'm not that evil neither so i tend to be in the middle lord willing of course now um it says here Mm, where was I? With the malignity of the root. So, and also the infirmities are uh, that you can get sick, for example. Why? Because he that sinned in front of his maker, let, here, Romans 6. The, the infirmities also. Romans chapter 6, 6, verse 23. The wages, the reward of sin is death. But the gift of the Heavenly Father is eternal life through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. And then you have another one which is in the book of. I mean, wait a minute here. Here. Um, where is it again? Here, Sarah 38. Sarah 38 and verse 13. Let me get to the. You can read the rest if you have the time for yourself. It's very great, actually. But um, I'm going to. Well, let me let me jump to this verse. Wait, let me see. Sirach chapter thirty-eight. <coughs> Sorry, verse four. The Lord had created medicines out of the earth, so not no doctor medicines, herbs, and he that is wise will not abhor them, right? Um, leave off from sin. I'm, I'm looking for he is verse 15 he that sinned before his maker let him fall into the hand of the physician so this shows you that when you get sick you're sinning if you read this for 
if, if you have the time, read this for yourself. If you have the time. And then you will come to the conclusion like, oh, wait a minute. So, if, if, if the Heavenly Father allows me to get sick, oh, I sinned. Oh, oh okay. Well, don't do it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So now, going on to here. Mm, yeah, Second Esther chapter 3, verse... The rest of 22. Uh, with the malignity of the root. So that the good departed away, and the evil abode still. So the times pass away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise up thy servant called David. Sorry. Then didst thou raise up a servant called David, whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name, and to offer incest and oblation unto the unto thee therein. Oblation is when you ask forgiveness to the Heavenly Father. Basically. Okay, you can... Okay, wait, let me read until here. When this was done many years, then they that inhabited the city forsook thee. And in all things did even as Adam. So, you know, and all his generations had done. For they also had a wicked heart so now that you know this now let me read that part again verse 21 for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed so wait sorry actually I needed to read this one 20 and yet took it thou not away from them a wicked heart the Lord left that there in us he could have created us perfect which is what he is going to do in the near future which is here Hebrews 8, 6. But now had he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, and we had, uh, yeah, if it was perfect, then should no place have been sought for the second. Right. If the Heavenly Father made us perfect and faultless in the beginning, why would we then need Yahweh Shai to come and fix us? Because that's the way the Lord created it. So, he did not make a mistake when he said that I made the people and now it repented me that I made them. No, no, no. He didn't make a mistake. He just didn't have no mercies more for them. So he killed them. Every last one individual from the people to the animals to the... Um, what is this? The, the, the insects and the crawling animals and stuff like that and the birds he killed them but did he kill a hundred percent no because he spared Noah and and the animals alive on the ark and stuff like that but he killed the rest he killed the rest so going back to over here mm, no here 